welcome back to my channel. So in today's video, I wanted to be sharing what to expect for your first eight week appointment when with an OBGYN, also known as an OB for short. I do know that everybody has a different experience, but generally they're gonna have the same procedure or like the same structure of the first appointment. So I wanna help any ladies of there out there who have not had their first eight week appointment yet to give them an idea of what to expect and even some tips and questions to go into just knowing so that you feel a little more confident in what's going to be happening in that first appointment. The first thing I want to mention is that you will be getting an ultrasound. It's generally going to be a vaginal ultrasound. So it is not going to be on the belly, but rather inside of you that she takes the ultrasound. Now, the reason for this being is because the baby is so tiny at eight weeks, it's really hard to see it through a belly ultrasound, I guess. And so they have to do it the other way. Um, that was something that I wish somebody would have told me, but I, I was glad that I had asked beforehand and prepared myself. Cause then I felt like I can clean myself down there and like get ready for that kind of treatment, you know? To give you an idea of what that was like, it was a long like metal plastic type of a thing that she just stuck inside of you and they move it around a little bit and until you can see the baby, you can see different angles, you can see if you're having twins. So I wouldn't say it was a painful experience, but it definitely wasn't very comfortable. I personally don't like doing stuff like that. So that was an experience that I'm glad I only had to do once and from that on point, I can do belly ultrasounds. The next thing that typically happens when you meet with your OBGYN for the first time is you draw your blood and they take about six vials of blood for you. And that is so they can test your iron levels, see if you have diabetes, different things like that to make sure that you as a mom are healthy and have everything ready to go as needed. You take about six vials of blood. So do prepare yourself for that if you are sensitive to needles like I am, or if you are just sensitive to blood in general. So for me, I got to choose, um, that may be where it varies for your doctor and you, but just expect that that might happen. So going along, getting your blood drawn for your first appointment or even your second one, they're going to ask you some questions too. If you want to do even further testing, which would be needing to take more vials of blood from you, but you can do genetic testing and different things like that to see if your baby is going to have any just complications or disorders. Um, so you can prepare, like I think sometimes they can test whether or not they're gonna have a spinal issue or um, different disorders and things like that. I personally didn't do that because I just didn't want to know. I prefer to just love the baby as it is and just keep moving on with life and like whatever happens happen, but you do get to choose whether or not you want to do that extra test. Also, another really cool thing um, you can do, I believe it's called the genetic testing, but you can choose to take that as well which is about another hundred or $200, but that way you can find the gender out actually right then and there um, once they take your blood and give you your results back. So that's also another choice, another vial of blood. So if, again, if you're sensitive with blood and needles like me, it's not necessary. Yeah, we decided to wait. We didn't want to do the extra testing and spend the extra money. We decided to just wait till, you know, closer to 20 weeks to figure out our gender. So this is something nobody told me that I had a choice or told me that it was even a thing. So I would just do some research about the different testing things that you can do, or even ask your midwife or doctor or whatever, what kind of testing you can do and what they mean so that that way you're prepared to answer yes or no. And you really know what it is that they're testing for. Okay, the next thing that I'm going to mention is that you need to make sure you need to pee when you get there because they are gonna have you pee in a cup and put it back in the you know metal box in the bathroom. And nobody told me this when I made the appointment, nobody told me this. The only reason why I knew is because I had asked on the phone and clarified with them and I had had a friend say to do that. So anyways, I had to pee in a cup and I'm glad I made sure I drank enough water and things like that because you wanna make sure you can have enough water in your system to pee when you get there. But nobody told me that and I was so annoyed because I was like, well, what if I didn't have pee to share with you today? Like you should probably tell people these things when you're making the appointment. 
and final thing I want to go ahead and mention is that when I went into my first eight week appointment, I went in there with such high expectations of, okay, this is what my doctor is going to be like. I'm going to spend like an hour with her. She's going to educate me, tell me the things I can do, tell me things I shouldn't be doing, give me a list of different symptoms and how long they generally last and what to expect for the next couple of weeks. And she didn't do any of it. Like she didn't. I got maybe five or 10 minutes total with my doctor and I spent the majority of the hour waiting for the doctor and the nurse to come in. And so I was very disappointed and still to this day after I went to my 11 week appointment, I still was very disappointed because I didn't feel like I got any advice or any information from the doctor to help me. And it almost felt like they were treating me like I had had 10 kids at this point and then I knew what I was doing. And I was just, no, I was, still confused and still to this day I'm bugged that they don't give me more information. They did give me, like you guys have seen in one of my vlogs, they had given me a packet of stuff to read, but a lot of the information in those packets were actually like after you have the baby kind of information. So I just wish the doctor would have given me more information and more, you know, advice on your first trimester and what to expect and like what's normal, what you should be doing, what you shouldn't be doing, when you should be worried. Um, because different things like that, I feel like for a new mom, you really want to know because you, this is your first time doing it. You want to be educated and feel confident in your pregnancy. And that's something I didn't get validation for when I went to both my appointments. Anyways, guys, I hope this video was helpful. It's simple and sweet, but hopefully at this point, you guys have a little better idea of what to expect when you go to your first appointment with your doctor and also like make sure you drink water so you can pee into that cup just know that like there's a lot of different things that they'll throw at you like all like I said the different testing things like that do your research beforehand so that you know what you want and you can just get it done in the first appointment um, meaning the blood drawn and things like that um, if not then you can have a confidence saying, no, I don't want that testing. I'm good with this. Let me know in the comments down below if you guys want me to make a video on different questions to ask your doctor in your appointments. And we will see you guys in the next video. Bye.